lovelies. I hope you're all well. We are in design space today and this is actually the first part of a three part video. So the first part is today, which is design space. Then the next one, which will be on Wednesday is about how you do this with vinyl. And then the last one on Friday is about how you do this with iron on. So we're going to be doing slice layering. Now there are different ways to ensure that when you're layering with vinyl or iron on that you get it perfectly right and one of those ways is slice layering and the other reason that I love slice layering so much is that you're not layering vinyl upon vinyl or iron on upon iron on on top of each other because you've created layers within each other so rather than layering on top you're layering within and it just helps to keep your item so whether it be vinyl or iron on to keep it nice and flush rather than having bulky bits of layering everywhere and it also means that you don't have to worry about the order in which you do your layers because you're not supposed to layer on top of certain types of vinyl or certain types of iron on like glitter doesn't mean you can't you can but you're not supposed to because it doesn't last as long and it can be uh, quite tricky to do. So the rule of thumb is that you don't layer on top of things like glitter iron on or glitter vinyl, which means they always have to be that last layer. With slice layering, you can put them on your item at any point. So I'm gonna show you how we do slice layering in design space. And then on Wednesday, we'll look at how you do it with vinyl and then Friday iron on. But I'm gonna show you just the design space part today. So I've got three different images. I'm gonna start with this one here. And these are all design space images. So if we look at the image in the layers panel, you can see that we've got the full image here, then we've got the pink layer, the white layer, the yellow layer, and the purple layer. So as this currently is, we would put the purple square down and then we would put the yellow, the pink, and the white on. But to get them perfectly lined up, we'd have to do something like registration marks. With slice layering, we don't have to. And of course, we've got all those other benefits as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure the entire layer is selected and we can see the entire layer or the entire image I should say is selected because each of the layers is that slightly mint color. We're gonna come up to the top of our layers panel and ungroup it so that each of our layers become individual. Now there's two ways in which we can do this. The first way is to come to our layers panel and hide the layers that we don't want. And don't forget, you can only slice two layers at a time. So we can either come in and hide the layers that we don't want, and then draw around like so to highlight the two that we do want. Or if we come to our layers panel, we can select the first layer, hold down the shift key on our keyboard and select the other layer. And if you're a bit more advanced, you can actually leave the other layers there and using your shift key, just select the two that you want. So there's different ways, depending on how confident you are, that you can do this. For now, we're just going to hide the other two layers to make it nice and easy. And I'm just going to draw around my purple layer and my yellow layer. I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel and you'll see we've got slice, combine, attach and flatten. We're going to select slice. Now if you come down to the bottom here and the slice option is not available, it's most likely because you have selected more than two layers. So always check your layers panel because any layers that are selected will be this minty color. We're then going to select slice and you'll see we end up with three results. So we've got our purple square with our text sliced out of it. We've then got our text in purple and our text in yellow. 
So if I bring back my square, we can see that we want our square with the text sliced out and we want our yellow text layer. So that purple text layer, we can actually delete that, we don't need that. And the great thing is because we're using the eyes to hide everything, when we bring back our other pieces in a minute, it means that everything is still directly in place so we don't have to worry about lining anything up. If we move something on our canvas, we've then got to try and line it all up again. But using the hide icon, means that everything stays in its correct position. I'm then gonna bring back one of the other layers and you'll see that it's now behind our two slice results. So all I'm gonna do is just click on it, come to the top of our canvas, go to arrange and bring to front and that's going to bring it up to the front. Again, to make life a little bit easier, I'm just going to hide that yellow layer. I'm then going to draw round my purple square and my pink layer. Again, come down to the bottom of my layers panel and select slice. Exactly the same, we're going to end up with three slice results. So again, we've got our square with our items sliced out. We've then got our pink layer and our purple layer. So of course we want to keep our pink layer and our original base layer. So that purple slice we can delete. And if you're ever unsure, just use your hide icons to help you. We're then gonna unhide the last layer Again, select it, arrange and bring to front. If I wanted to, I could just hold down my shift key and select that purple base layer. But again, for ease, we're just gonna hide the other two layers. We can then draw around and slice. And once again, we have our base layer with our text sliced out. We have our text in white and then our text in purple. So of course we want to get rid of the purple text. If we bring back our original layer, you can then see how that is now going to cut with all of our text cut out in it. And we can then simply layer our other pieces perfectly in line. And they'll all be nice and flush. It'll be a nice kind of even layering, nice and easy to put together. And it means that if I wanted the base layer, the purple layer in glitter, I could do. Whereas if I was layering on top, I couldn't do that. So it just opens up a whole world of possibilities. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. This one is a little bit trickier. It's still great to do um, but because we've got different layers sat on top of each other rather than different layers sat on one it means that we've got a little bit more work to do so what we're going to do is exactly the same as before we're going to ungroup it and if we look at our layer structure you can see that this one sits on this one and then this one actually sits on both of those layers because it overlaps onto both of them. So we're going to hide the top layer first and we're going to start with these two. And again, all we're going to do is draw around and slice. And when we slice it, we end up with the outline of our bottom layer. We've then got this piece in yellow and this piece in orange. So of course we want to keep that base layer and the orange one. So we can actually delete that yellow layer. And you can then see how that is going to sit perfectly within that base layer. If I bring back my third layer, it's hidden behind here. So again, if I select it, 
arrange and bring to front, it's then going to sit on top. Now I need to slice it out of both of these layers, but I obviously can't do that at once because they're separate layers and we can only slice two layers at a time. So what I'm gonna do is hide the orange layer first and I'm gonna slice out of the yellow layer. So all I'm gonna do is draw around it, come to the bottom of my layers panel and slice. However, this time we actually end up with four results instead of three because we've got those different areas overlapping. So if we just hide each of our pieces, you can see that we've still got our base result. We want to keep that. We've then got this piece in yellow. So we want to get rid of that. We don't need that. We have, however, got two pieces in brown that actually should be one piece. But because of the way the image is, we've resulted in our brown piece becoming two. So what we're actually going to do is hide that base piece, draw around this, come to combine and weld it back together so it becomes a solid piece again. And we can then see how that is going to sit within. If we bring back our orange layer and we hide that yellow layer, we can see that we again need to slice this out. So again, we're gonna draw round and slice. And we end up with the same thing again with those four layers. So again, if we take a look, we've got our base layer. We can bring back that orange layer. We know that we definitely need that. If we bring back this piece, we know we don't need that because that is where our brown layer is going to sit. So we can delete that. And then again, if we bring back our brown layers, we can see that those have been sliced when we actually want it to be a full layer. So exactly the same as before, we're gonna hide the other two layers make sure that both of our brown layers are there. We can select them, come down to combine and weld them back together. And it's really important that we weld them because if we just attach them, those cuts will actually cut out. So it's very, very important that you do actually weld them. Welding, as we know, can't be undone. And we could, if we wanted to unite them, that would work as well. But for something like this, you're never going to want to undo that weld. So I personally would just weld it. But it's a personal preference. It's a personal choice. And if we bring back our other layers, we can then see again how they're all going to sit within each other rather than on top of each other. So I've got our final image here and if we look in the layers panel, you can see that we've got all of these layers here. Now, but where this one is different is that all of these pips are individual. So as we can only slice two layers at a time, theoretically what we need to do is select a pip at a time and highlight the flesh, the watermelon part and slice each of those pips out one at a time. But nobody has got the time for that. So just a little trick with this. Again, if we just ungroup it, we can hide each of these layers here. So what I'm gonna do is hide the watermelon so that we're left with just the pips. And then what I'm gonna do is highlight all of those pips, come down to combine, and weld them together so that they become one layer. 
What that means is that I can then slice all of these at once rather than having to do them individually. So if I now bring back this piece, because I've welded those pips, if I draw around them, you can see that the two layers are selected. I can then go to slice and it will slice them out for me. So there's my main part, there's my pips in red, I don't want that, I can delete those and there is my pips in black and because I've sliced out I can easily transfer those perfectly within the slices and again it means if I wanted this to be red glitter I can put the pips on there in a different iron-on or a different vinyl and it's not going to have any adverse effect. Whereas if I had just wanted to layer these directly on top, I then couldn't have this in a glitter. So if I hide my pips and my watermelon, you can see that the watermelon overlaps that pink layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is hide the yellow and the green. I'm going to draw round and slice. So that's now sliced out and you can see that because we've got this overlap here, the red of our flesh has obviously been sliced. So like before, we need to actually weld that back together. But before we do that, what we're going to do is hide the two red layers and you can see that that pink layer directly under the red is the one that we don't want. So we can actually delete that. If we then hide that pink layer and bring back the red, we can draw around it, go to combine and weld it back together. And that pink is then gonna sit perfectly on the outside with our pips in the middle. If we then bring back our yellow layer, we can see that our yellow and our pink overlap. So again, we're gonna hide the red and the pips. We're gonna draw around, come to the bottom of our layers panel and slice. And again, you're going to see because of that overlap, that pink layer gets sliced in half. So again, we're going to hide both the pink layers because we're going to weld those back together. The yellow piece directly under this pink one, we're going to delete. We can bring back the two pink pieces, hide our yellow one. And again, draw round, combine and weld those back together so that they then sit perfectly within each other. We can then bring back our green layer. Again, we've got an overlap. So we can draw round come down to the bottom of our layers panel and slice. We can see because of that overlap, our yellow layer again has been split in half. So if we come to our layers panel, we can hide both of our yellow layers. And again, that green one directly under the yellow one. We want to delete, we don't want that. If we bring back our two yellow layers and hide our green one, we can draw around, combine and weld them together. And you can then see how all of those sit perfectly within each other rather than on top of each other, which means that we can layer perfectly and we can use any iron-on or vinyl materials we like because we don't have to worry about them being layered on top of each other.
As always, I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. On Wednesday, I'll be showing you how we use slice layering with vinyl. And on Friday, I'll be showing you how we use slice layering with iron on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.